Insert teleport joke here on this episode of Battle Guides featuring Serafina. Serafina is a mobile brawler who uses her amazing mix-ups in order to confuse and dominate opponents. However, that all comes at the cost of having generally low stats, poor range, as well as being very, very positioning reliant. Serafina's unique ability is Hollow Projection. Long story short, Every single one of Serafina's styles has a projection number. As an end of beat effect, she may then place her projection marker on a space that is range X from her, wherein X is equal to the projection number on your style that beat. Note one thing here is that range can be calculated going towards the opponent or going the other way. Which means that Serafina can place it in front of her or behind her as long as it sticks to whatever range is on your projection card. Now, as an anti, during the anti phase, Serafina may go to the space where her projection marker is and then put the projection marker off the board. Otherwise, it stays where it is. Note that Serafina can only have one projection up at any time. This unique ability is quite powerful and quite devastating if used Correctly, Serafina is a very, very melee-oriented brawler who uses a lot of melee-oriented attacks, having literally only one style with any range on it. So, how do you use this unique ability to your full advantage? Well, your unique ability is essentially hit confirm. It allows you to get into positions that will make it very easy for Serafina to hit the opponent, no matter what the range, so long as you think ahead with your projection marker. However, another way to use this is very advanced, well not that advanced, but quite devastating as well. This is what I call the power at two ranges. Now, this is something that we talked over in the Hiketch video before, but I will talk more about it later on in the advanced strategies. Just know one thing, this contributes a lot to what makes Serafina such a good character, because it contributes a lot to her mix-up game, being able to taunt your opponent from two different ranges is way more powerful than you might think, and we'll go over that later on. Now let's move on to her styles. Let's start off with Tactical. Tactical has pretty decent stats, especially for Serafina, who doesn't really have a lot of them. However, the good thing here, and I think one of the best things about this card, is its projection. Its projection is X, wherein X is any edge of the board, meaning that you can effectively put your projection marker onto the ends of the board. The cost, however, is that if you are stunned, you don't get to do the projection placement. This style is quite powerful for a multitude of reasons. Number one, it's really good on the current beat because it allows Serafina to have decent stats because she usually doesn't. And then it's also good for the next beat, allowing you to easily set up a mix-up and or get hit confirm on your opponent because edges of the board are really, really, really good for stuff like that. So say that you're in melee range from your opponent, put it on the edge of the board that's literally on the opposite side of the board, and then suddenly your opponent now has to worry about hitting you either at range 1 or range 5. Which is a huge problem for them, and a huge boon for you, because you know exactly what range you're playing at. Again, that contributes a lot to Serafina's mix-up game, allowing her to threaten two ranges at a time. This is quite powerful, and I suggest you use this for that very, very often. Now when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend this thing with Dash. Dash is quite effective on tactical, although the power and priority are generally wasted on a card like Dash. The thing about it is that it allows you to gain positioning advantage for the next turn, like times two. Because not only do you get to reposition Serafina, you get to reposition her projection marker as well, allowing you to set up an easy vortex, no problem. Now, if doing it with Dash is not your thing, you can also easily pair it with Drive. Tactical Drive is quite a powerful attack, boasting a lot of power and a lot of speed. But more than that, you can easily get into melee range with your opponent, which again easily sets up the Vortex mix-up thing that I was telling you guys about earlier. Uh, as to what 
as to how that specifically works we'll go over that later on but just know that this is an easy way to get that to work just be careful of your opponent stunning you because you won't be able to use your projection placement ability if you do get stunned next up is silver silver has decent priority projection to an awesome reveal effect which basically means that opponents can't get more power and priority from stuff other than their style and base and of course an ever amazing before activating advance one or two spaces this thing is so good arguably one of seraphina's best styles if not the best style she has in her kit it has zero to two extra range which is magical range for literally almost any attack in your kit it also has an amazing reveal effect which makes big speedsters and people with big payout attacks cry if they ever anti into it and of course a projection too is probably the weakest part about this style because it doesn't really make you threaten two ranges at once but if you do get into melee range and then just play the marker behind you uh threatening range one and three at the same time can be very good because it basically forces your opponent to either drive or shot you in order to ensure a hit which is very very good as well now the force gauge deserves a special mention when talking about this card especially because of that reveal effect that reveal effect uh it doesn't let your opponents get more power or priority above the printed stats on their cards the important part here is the priority when you anti-priority on top of a silver attack that's guaranteed priority plus two no matter how much force your opponent has because if they do end up anti-ing uh, priority plus two to counter anti your priority plus two, not only do you negate that and ensure that you basically have priority plus two on top of them, Silver's innate priority plus one effectively gives you a usually priority plus three attack. That's quite powerful, especially if it makes your opponent waste force. With that in mind, Silver is a really powerful attack that can dominate a lot of opponents, and I highly recommend it. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend it with Strike. Strike benefits a lot from the extra priority and the extra hit confirmed. It's a range 1 to 3 power 4 attack that has effectively 6 priority, which can be really absurd if your opponent is not prepared for it. However, if that's not your thing, you can also easily pair it with the ever-amazing Grasp. Grasp is just overkill if you really desperately need to stun someone. Certain characters levy on not being stunned, and Silver Grasp is a very easy way to do just that. Next up is Locust. Locust is a very interesting and powerful attack as well. Uh, it has negative priority and projection 3, but its reveal effect is what makes it utterly amazing. Because if you have switched sides with your opponent this beat, you gain priority plus 4, effectively making this attack a priority plus 3. Guaranteed. Now, how does that work? How do you ever switch sides with your opponents before revealing? Your unique ability allows you to teleport, and if you do end up switching sides with your opponents using the teleport, it does indeed count for this style. In fact, it's the only reason this style works. So, if so long as you switch sides with the opponent with your teleport, it will be very, very good because it basically gives you pseudo hit confirm with the teleport plus the immense amount of priority that goes along with this style. Projection 3 is nothing to scoff at either because you're able to effectively uh, put yourself at range 4 from the opponent if you were at range 1 after the switch, which is really, really powerful. Now, uh, there's many ways to talk about how powerful this style can be, but it's basically all about positioning. If you get your marker into the correct position and your opponent runs out of options to dodge you, this can be a very powerful attack as well, because not only does it have a lot of speed, it has no power minuses to go along with it. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with Drive. Drive is a very powerful option with this card because just in case you don't have enough hit confirmed to reach the opponent, um, the drive will allow you to get in there and be very, very fast with a priority of 7. That's insane. However, one other base that I highly recommend with this card is Burst. Though it might make no sense at all, uh, doing this plus Burst basically allows you to counter Burst's innate weakness to shot. And it allows you to clash out your opponent's 
drives. Seeing that you have a lot of priority on your hands, you'll oftentimes win the clash afterwards. Now we have Implosion. Implosion has minus power and minus priority, but it makes up for it with its amazing effects. Number one, it has Projection 4, meaning that it is one of the largest projections you can get that's not Tactical's instant edge of the board projection. This can be quite powerful, especially if your opponent's got you cornered or if you have the opponent cornered himself. Now, aside from that, it has passively opponents at range 1 get hit you, which is so good. And on hit, it even lets you pull opponents even closer to Serafina, where she wants them. Now, this style is quite versatile for many reasons, but literally, I will say that this is the style that makes Serafina work. Although I will say that Silver is one of her best styles, I will not, never deny that Implosion is literally the style that makes Serafina work as a character. The reason why all of the mix-ups I tell you guys in the previous styles are all about threatening range 1 and some other range is exactly because of Implosion. Implosion basically tells your opponent that literally half the time, Serafina can just choose to make them miss. It's as simple as that. If they have no way to essentially move around the board after seeing you teleport and then use Implosion, you will often have the easiest way to make the opponent miss an attack and then get two free damage in on them, as well as pulling them closer towards you should they be far away, or pulling them over you so that they're now trapped in the corner or so that they're no longer trapped in the corner. And then, you can then projection 4, literally almost on the opposite side of the board, and then your opponent starts crying. Implosion is really good at literally everything Serafina wants to do. It allows her to dodge opponents effectively, which is what she wants to do. It allows her to threaten opponents at two ranges, which is what she wants to do. And it allows her to set up for the next beat, which is what she wants to do. Implosion is arguably, no, not even arguably, it is literally Serafina's best style. Not in terms of stats, but in terms of versatility and outright power, but not damage. So, uh, don't underestimate Implosion just because of its low stats, its versatility can and will surprise you. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with Strike. Strike is a very interesting pair to pair with this because it makes up for the poor stats with Strike's amazing stun guard and power. But aside from that, most of the time when your opponents know that you're going to teleport into their face, they're just going to strike you as well. By pairing it with Implosion, you get to negate their strike and then hit them for 3, which is really good. However, aside from this, I also highly recommend it with Drive. Implosion Drive might seem weird. Why would you pair Drive with a slow style? But the thing about this is that not only can you put Force Gauge on top to make it faster, but a lot of the attacks that Serafina hates dealing with are usually really slow, like Shot and Burst. So, with that in mind, uh, a priority 3 is more than good enough to handle those cards really easily. But more than that, if your opponent is playing a generally slow strike, a slow shot, or a slow burst, this attack pair is so powerful because it allows you to drive into their face, get into range 1, and then make them miss. Which is really, really good as well. Next up, we have... Hollow. Hollow is Serafina's only style with range, giving her range plus 1 to 2, but it's offset by not only by that minimum range, but by the low priority as well. It has projection 1 and on hit at range 3, power plus 2. This is a very interesting style and it's very clunky to use, um, mostly because it just doesn't work on a lot of intuitive levels because you want to use it with certain things, but then certain things don't make sense to use with it at all. Uh, but really, it's just here to correct Serafina's innate lack of range. That's pretty much all it does. It, the power is an extra bonus. More often than not, it 
it's just a bonus. But the interesting thing here is the projection one. Um, no, remember when using the projection one that the projection end of beat effect where you move the marker around is completely optional. So if moving your marker into projection one is not going to be beneficial for you, you can choose to not do so. Projection one is very interesting because usually I'm telling you guys to do long range and then short range projection teleports. But this basically allows you to only adjust your range by one space. Which might not seem that interesting, but against certain characters, the difference between range 1 and range 2 is so huge that it can often win you the game in those niche situations. Otherwise, just keep your projection where it is. But aside from fixing Serafina's innate lack of range, Hollow is basically Serafina's cash out style, as it allows her to deal a lot of damage if she gets her position incorrect. If you've pressured your opponent out of all of their movement options, like burst and dash, you can easily set up a hollow for the next beat or something, and then get free 2 damage in. That's pretty much how good it can be, and how powerful and effective it is. Now when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with Grasp. Grasp synergizes well with this, because of the fact that you can move the opponent into range 3, and then get the power bonus on it. That's pretty much it. If you need extra priority, you can also pair it with the ever amazing priority plus two anti on your force gauge. But aside from that, that's all it pretty much does. However, I also highly recommend pairing it with Strike. Strike is a very powerful attack, no doubt. Serafina absolutely loves using Strike because it has good stats. Um, the low priority is really offset by Strike's amazing stun guard 5. Again, Strike loves the range. And of course, if you do get to teleport really well and get your opponent at range 3, you can then easily whack them in the face for 6 damage. It's quite powerful. And finally, we have Serafina's unique base, Field. Field has range X, power 3, priority 4. Effectively making it pseudo dry. But the awesome thing here is that its range is the space your marker is on and the spaces adjacent. And then, if you hit the opponent, they can't move for the rest of the beat. This attack is quite powerful on many levels. Number one, it fixes Serafina's innate lack of range. Again, if you're doing my strategy of threatening at two ranges, sometimes you can find yourself at range 4 from the opponent with your marker adjacent to them. If you find yourself in this situation, field can be quite powerful instead of switching with your marker because if you use field, you can easily not only hit the opponent from that range, but also, also prevent them from moving. Meaning that it's an easy way to poke your opponent from far away and then keep the awesome mix-up vortex that you've set up the last beat. Which is really, really good for that one thing alone. But aside from that, it's a pretty okay attack. Note that this attack does not work on anything that requires you to teleport on the turn that you play it because of the fact that this attack's range is where the marker is and the marker gets thrown off the board when you teleport to it. This means that Locust and Hollow might not be the best attack pairs with this card. However, if we're talking about decent attack pairs, we can easily pair it with Tactical because of the extra power and priority synergizing very well with Field. However, if we can also pair it with Silver. Silver, though, it has its before activating quote-unquote wasted because you're not using the extra range it gives you with that movement. Um... Silver Field can be very, very good when you really want to reposition yourself and get into the correct positioning. Simply put, you can easily whack the opponent with your field, get in with because of Silver, and then uh, play your projection marker behind you so that you can threaten two ranges again. And it's a very easy way to set up as well, and it's really fast if you anti the extra priority on top. What's there to not like? Serafina's two overdrive finishes are Rither White Infusion and Fulminating Vortex. Rither White Infusion is a very interesting and powerful overdrive finisher, which is basically an upgraded version of Klinhide's finisher, which I think has a similar name. It has range 1 to 3, 
power 3 and priority 4. But the interesting thing is that after activating, Serafina now has range plus 0 to 2 on literally every one of her attacks at the cost of losing one life every end of beat. Now, this can be very interesting for a character who desperately needs range. Now, Serafina literally has magic range on every attack afterwards. And as an extra bonus, it's a actual attack. It's not just like a beat where you do nothing and then get upgraded for the rest of the game. No, you can actually attack on the beat you use this thing. So, as long as Serafina isn't stunned out of her attack, she effectively turns into an utter beast mode monster who can dominate games because all Serafina really needs is rage. And giving her that turns her into an insane mix-up vortex monster beast woman. However, if that's not your thing, Fulminating Vortex might be your thing. It's range 3, power 8, priority 8, and it does literally nothing else. That's it. This overdrive finisher is basically meant to whack and kill your opponent. It's effectively a more powerful version of Hollow, if you think about it that way. Because Hollow's all about getting into range 3 and then cashing out. And this thing is literally get into range 3 and insta-kill the opponent most of the time. Again, getting the opponent into range 3 might be a bit hard uh, because a lot of opponents can easily just dash and burst out of this attack. But if both dash and burst are down, this can be a valid option as well. Uh, but aside from that, it's a really decent way to finish the game. Plus, it's extra hype if your opponent doesn't see it coming. Now when it comes to the force gauge, the special action, as well as pulse, Serafina completely loves the force gauge and the special action, and overloads, and pulse. Mostly because she's Serafina. In terms of overloads, being able to anti the stun guard 2 on top of any shot play is very good. But aside from that, the priority plus 2 on her literally any attack is so good as well. Especially with silver because it allows you to bluff the opponents out of their force. But more than that, um, you can easily get extra power on your attacks, extra soak on your attacks. All the possibilities of overloads are just so amazing for Serafina, so don't underestimate that. Now, when it comes to using her special action, Switch is a very powerful option for Serafina because it allows her to pair it with her unique base field. Field doesn't really work with a lot of her styles because most of them require you to teleport around to be good. So, pairing it with... A blank style is effectively better than pairing it with most of her styles. Again, that goes along with the usual advantages of using Switch, such as extra force and having extra styles in your hand, which is especially important for Serafina because she's a heavy mix-up character. And more styles in the hand means more powerful plays and more things your opponent has to think about, which is very, very effective. Just be wary because of the fact that the Switch style technically doesn't have a projection range on it, so you won't be able to put down new markers with it. But that's usually fine because your marker's usually going to be there because you're usually going to use it with field anyway. But if you use it with dash, just be very careful about that. And finally, we have Pulse. Pulse is really good in Serafina as well, allowing her to go into any position she wants. Well, not any, but allows her to reposition for free or reposition the opponent for free. Allowing her to easily, easily set up some mix-ups and vortexes. It's as simple as that. Now let's move on to the part that everybody loves. Serafina advanced strategies and combos. Number one, the threat of two ranges. The threat of two ranges is basically what I call Serafina's vortexes. Because she's really about that. She's about making your opponent decide whether or not they want to hit in melee or hit that range. Because that's Serafina's biggest strength. The ability to make the opponent have to guess melee or range. Range 1 or range 4. And that alone can win Serafina a lot of games, especially if her opponents choose wrong. It's that simple but really complicated as well. As getting into the correct range for your mix-ups and vortexes is not that easy. 
However, I've given you guys all the tools you needed to do so, so just remember them and use them really well to get into those perfect mix-up ranges because literally, that's how you should play. Number two, Null Beats. Serafina is a queen of Null Beats. If you thought Karen and Jaeger were really annoying with Full Moon, Serafina is basically kinda like that, but every beat. The ability to teleport to the marker is so powerful, but it doesn't always have to be about playing it with a decent attack. Sometimes Serafina can easily cause a Null Beat by dodging the opponent's attack using her marker. If your marker is in a safe place, you can easily teleport to it and then make your opponent waste resources or waste cards. With that alone, it's quite powerful, especially because Serafina gets to set up again next beat because most of her styles have projection ranges on them and it allows you to form another vortex, which is quite powerful. And number three, melee range. Serafina is a threat at two ranges, but if it were up to me and personal preference, I would prefer Serafina to be in my opponent's face as much as possible. Serafina is a melee-oriented character, and you should do everything in your power to usually get into melee range. Not only because of the fact that she has low range, but also because of the fact that Implosion is such a powerful style. You can easily, easily, easily make your opponent waste a lot of ranged options just by being in their face and having Implosion in your hand. So keep that in mind and use it very well. Now let's go on to some Serafina combos. Number one has to be Locust Burst. Locust Burst is such an amazingly awesome attack because it, it feels really cute and you feel really smart whenever you use it. But aside from that, it's very powerful. It counters a lot of the things that Serafina hates dealing with and it allows you to set up for a Vortex the next turn. What more could you want? Next up is Silver Strike. Silver Strike is quite powerful as well, especially if you add the any priority or power on top of it. Not only is it range 1 to 3, not only is it power 4, not only can it be priority 6, it's also stun guard 5. Do I even need to hype it up even more? Silver Strike is honestly one of Serafina's best attack pairs. Use it well, but be very cautious about actually using it, because once it's down, a lot of your hit confirm goes away. And finally, we have Tactical Dash. Tactical Dash is quite a powerful attack. Well, it's not actually an attack, but it's a really easy way for Serafina to set up for the next beat and then utterly destroy her opponent with another Vortex. Just another day in the life of Serafina. And that pretty much does it for this episode of Battle Guides featuring Serafina. If you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, do put them in the comment section down below, and I will be sure to answer them. If you guys like the video, the character, or the game, check the description out below for awesome links to Level 99 Games' store. I'm sure you guys will love something there. And then, if you guys want to talk to me or any of the other BattleCon veterans, do, put it, uh, do check the description down below for links to our forums and other community websites. Again, if you're interested in BattleCon lore or just want to see some of the cards, we also have a wiki page down there to check out in the description. Of course, if you guys have any specific questions for me, comment section, and or my email, which again, is found in the description. Without much else to say, don't forget your special action, and don't forget the special action, and thank you, World of Indians. Thank you, and good night.